Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about using FFmpeg to turn a series of stills into a movie for a Ricoh Theta S for a 360 uh, video. This would be used for time-lapse uh, video. So, to get started, I will connect the Ricoh Theta to my Mac. So I'll open up the Finder here. And I'm going to hold down the uh, shutter button and the Wi-Fi while I plug in the Rico Theta to my computer using USB. And when I do that, it will show up in the sidebar um, as a storage device. Also, it looks like photos will open. I'll just close that. I don't want photos open. I'm going to open another Finder window. And I'll go to Downloads. And I'll create a folder here and call it time lapse. So if I go into the Rico Theta's folder structure, you'll see a series of photos here. I'll just preview a couple of these. It's just a time lapse of my backyard. I'm going to select all of these photos and I'll drag them over to this time lapse folder. Okay, now that the files are copied over, I'm just going to eject the Rico Theta. I don't really need it anymore. Now we need to download FFmpeg, so I'll open up Safari or another browser. I'll type in ffmpeg.org, and then I'll hit download. And I don't want to download the source for this tutorial. I want to go to the Apple symbol, and then I'm going to go static builds for OS X Intel. And these instructions are mostly for a Mac, but if you know Linux or Windows, you could potentially do a similar technique on those systems. So I'm going to click over here to the right on ffmpeg-2.8.3.7z. I'm also going to download this FF probe. <coughs> Excuse me. And these download pretty quick. These are uh, compressed with 7-zip, so I'm going to use um, the unarchiver to open them. I'll just double click on each one. The unarchiver is available in the Mac App Store. Um, so now we have both of these um, decompressed and ready to run, and we have a folder here with our JPEG images in them. So to use FFmpeg, we're going to open up a terminal here, and then I also have uh, some notes. Um, pardon me. Um, I will paste this uh, command line into the description of this video, and I'll also put links to uh, FFmpeg and anything else I need to. Uh, down in the description, so you don't have to copy it directly off my screen. I'll also up the size of this a little bit. So what we're going to do is run the ffmpeg command on this time-lapse directory. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go into the time-lapse directory. I'll type in uh, cd space tilde slash downloads slash time lapse and I'll hit enter and on your system you want to go into whatever folder you have your time lapse uh, images in so if we type in ls we'll see all these JPEG images I'll type clear to clear it and now I need to type in uh, this long command so It'll be tilde forward slash downloads ffmpeg. That's because ffmpeg is in my downloads folder. If you put it in another folder, you'll need to uh, direct yourself to that executable. I'll type in dash frame rate 30. And this is the frame rate of the JPEG images. So we're telling it we're going to um, use 30 frames per second of JPEG images to make this video. Dash pattern type space glob 
space dash i space uh, quote star dot jpg quote so this is telling it to choose all of the jpegs in the current folder which is our time lapse folder space dash s space and then we're saying 384 uh, 3840 by 1920 that's our resolution uh, we're going to be downsizing these jpegs just a little bit space dash c v lib x 264 so we're using h.264 and then r is our output rate of 30 frames per second and dash pix fmt uh, yuv 42p and that's I think our color space <clears throat> And then I'll just type out dot mp4 and I'll hit enter. Looks like I have an error here. Oh, I don't have the p after my uh, 420. And now it's going to convert this folder of images into a video. It'll take a minute here to do. Okay, FFmpeg is finished processing. So if we go into our time lapse folder, along with the series of images, we'll see an out.mp4. If we look at these JPEGs and preview them, you'll see they increment. Uh, we can also open up the MP4, and we have an equirectangular uh, video uh, of our time lapse. So at this point, you could take this MP4 video and edit it in another program or add music or something to it. Um, if you want to upload it to YouTube, you need to inject metadata into it. So for that, I'm going to use um, the 360 uh, video metadata app. And it will bring up a dialog and ask me to choose my file. I'll drag the out.mp4 in there. I'll hit open and inject. And I'll just name it uh, out, dot, out underscore inject. Okay, and that only took a second. So now I have the uh, output file with the metadata. I can go into YouTube now. And I'll hit the upload button. And I can just drag this on the page. And it'll take a minute to upload. And um, after it uploads, it won't work as a 360 video right away. It takes a minute for it to process. So um, I will link to this uh, 360 file, um, 360 URL in the description if you want to see the output of the FFmpeg. Uh, you can't view these using the Ricoh Theta software on the Mac. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, there may be some other viewers that work on the Mac, but the uh, Ricoh Theta software doesn't work with this file. Um, but I do have other examples um, that I've done. I will pull up here. So when you view these, you'll want to change your quality setting to uh, 2160S. And then ultimately you will want to uh, make it full screen and that will give you the best quality. This is actually not a time lapse. This is just a slideshow, but it's a similar technique. Um, to make a slideshow. And it's going to go really slow. Uh, but you get the idea. If you do want to um, do a slideshow, you can go in here to frame rate and say one uh, slash 
and how many seconds you want each frame. So if you want 10 seconds per frame, do 1 slash 10. If you want 5 seconds per frame, do 1 slash 5. And that allows you, instead of do a time lapse, you could do a slideshow. And typically with a slideshow, you might have a dozen images that you want to show for 10 seconds each. Um, and this will create the slideshow. If you want to do time lapse, you could do 30 or other numbers here. So. Uh, well, that's the conclusion of this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you know more about FFmpeg than me, which wouldn't be a surprise, go ahead and leave any tips or tricks in the comments too. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.